to another edition of the Wrestling Underground Podcast. I'm going to try to do a good job in remembering that we record three shows in one tonight and actually do three outros and three intros. We'll see if I screw this up or not. I am your host, as always, Chad Porto, and joining me is the glorious one himself, Mox Green. Marcus, why do I never pronounce the R? What is so Midwestern about me? Fuck. <laughs> this is how we do it. This is our narrative. When he F's up, I smooth it over. Or in most cases, he goes make to jail. I, bail him out. <laughs> I screw up. You smooth it over. I make it worse. You know, it's it's the triangle of life. <laughs> it's the triangle of life. He mother put the bar to where. <laughs> I don't speak Swahili or Zamundi. <laughs> This is a Monday. <laughs> I saw that on TV, man. I, I saw the original. I was like, man, I I heard the sequel wasn't as good, and I don't know if it is or not. But like, as long as I just watch the original, the sequel can never disappoint me. <laughs> yeah, it messed me up for a long time because I went the longest thing, and I'm like, wait a minute, did they do something? Did they hook up Simba's daughter with Scar's son, and then go back and watch and like, oh, it's not Scar's son. He just really, really looks like him. Oh, yeah, that's right. Speaking of uh, sequels that were unnecessary, Lion King 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Are you Scar's son? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I mean, technically, all, all of the lionesses serve Mufasa. So, like, technically, you're boning your half-sister. So, like, why can't I be Scar's son and still bone my cousin? Why would beef in any way? Because... The good lions are light skinned. What? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That's not the plot. Uh, colorism. <laughs> what was uh? What was Simba's daughter's name? Uh, Kiara. Kiara's about to get black. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Matthew Broderick had an issue with it. <laughs> You're not gonna date that <laughs> in my house. Or my rock. Uh, goddamn. Speaking of rock, can he stop working out for like a year? I am worried about him. Yeah, I mean, look, if, if it if it stops him from having, I mean, I, I just feel like he was like, there's no way in hell I'm gonna finally get this movie going and where anything with padded anything in it. His muscles have muscles have muscles have muscles. Yeah, he's our all might. Yeah, basically. Holy crap. Does that mean he has a little dude living inside of him? <laughs> a little sickly b- bleeding out of the mouth, man, every uh, 20 seconds. So that's where Jaleel White has gone. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Get out of here, man. Yes, you did, Jaleel. You turned into the rock. Congratulations. Oh, look behind him. It's Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I always man. thought Myrtle was cuter than, uh, what was her name? Myra? Who, who, who did, no. who, who did no. uh, Urkel have a thing for? Judy? But, um, you thinking um, Laura. Mm, Laura. Uh, yeah, I always thought, yeah, Myra always had Laura and looks. It just, that wasn't the, that wasn't the story narrative. Wasn't she crazy, though? Like, wasn't that her whole shtick? Yeah, she was crazy. Yeah, Myra. That's Boutros, why I dug her so much. <laughs> yeah. Myra Boutros, Boutros, Monk House. Yes. <laughs> That's why I was so into her. She was crazy and obsessive. I need that. I need that so bad. So, if you're listening live, this is what we're doing. We're going to run through the, some highlights of the news from the week, and then we're going to do Making an Impact. We're not reviewing last week's Impact since this week is Slammiversary Week. We are going to preview the show instead. And then after that, we have episode three of the Lucha Look Back. So with that being said, let's get into the wrestling news. Uh, Bandito. Uh, sorry. He's, uh, he's the new Ring of Honor World Champion, and I'll still say this, and I'll say it every time I see this stupid-ass belt. It's fucking ugly. <laughs> it's it ugly worked. like Kim Kardashian's inside and Khloe oh. Kardashian's outside. <laughs> Oh. Wait, was Chloe the one dating uh, 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 Lamar? Yeah. Okay, so I was right then. 
Yeah, it's 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 funny you bring that up because well, I, I saw, I, I saw. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, dude, did you just threaten a base head that got a second chance in life? <laughs> Tristan and Lamar, WrestleMania 38. I needs to see it. I needs to see it, Marcus. <laughs> ones are cheating, ones are coking. Like what? I think they were both cheating on her until she got plastic surgery. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. I mean, Lamar's might have been a further symptom of, of his uh, addiction, but Tristan at this point is just like, what she, what she gonna do? Not take me back? <laughs> Would you say that either of them had entanglements? Entanglements. I don't know that. See what happens, Jada. See what happens when you do things. <laughs> Cause how she explained it, it's like just just say you. <laughs> you fucked him. <laughs> yeah, you fucked him. Just, just you try to put an explanation on it, like he just <laughs> y'all nursed y'all nursed him back to health. You dropped that older woman knowledge on him. He saw you as freaking uh, Aphrodite. He had a big schlong. That's what you needed. And he got he got hooked on something he could never really have because he was always going back to the Fresh Prince. But, like, think about that. Like, every woman would like a run at the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. At, at some point in some decades, someone has wanted Will Smith, right? Mm -hmm. He seems like a good dude. You know, his rap was always family-friendly, which I always appreciate music that's family-friendly. It doesn't need yeah. to be necessarily childlike or childish, but... To, to make content that's for everyone is hard, and to do it well is even harder. And he did. And, and like, all of his shows, all of his music, family-friendly. And I always love that about him. But, like, this man blew up an alien spaceship, right? He erased the mind of Tommy Lee Jones. He made Tommy Lee Jones forget about how much he hated Jim Carrey for, like, a brief moment. You know, he's done so many huge-ass projects, and you're bored with him? <laughs> <laughs> what? Marcus real screwed. If Will yeah. Smith can't get the the, ter the the 15th member of the Matrix franchise to stay loyal, we're screwed. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and then because you you know well you know about the red table talks. It was weird too because another professor is one of my favorite all time movies, and to find out that she was passing out on the set because she had a uh, substance issue. That was weird. Well, technically, that whole movie is about how someone had a substance issue. So I feel like she went method. <laughs> this, this, damn, this is... Yeah, or math. This is true. Oh, <laughs> just, yeah. just drop the ud. <laughs> so, Bandito unseated Rouge, and, and to be honest, I feel like I'm about to get in some Stephen A. Smith territory. <laughs> well... Uh oh, the uh -oh. the owner of this show. <laughs> uh, I'd just like to know uh, to the person who owns this show. I, I I in no way represent this show. Oh wait, shit, that's me. I feel like ever since the Luchadors took over the the top ring of Ring of Honor, I feel like they haven't had the same chutzpah, the same gravitas. Some of that has to do with the fact that linguistically they are not great at promo cutting now. I'm not going to go full Stephen A. with the, with the, with the Sh Shohei Otani, and I don't know exactly what he said about Otani. I know he, he made allusions or, or said something about the fact that because he can't speak Japanese, he's not, like, a real star or whatever. And then, he, and then they did, like, this 40-minute, like, we need to lambast Stephen A. On, on first take, take. And I'm just like, wow, you guys really are super sensitive. Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah, I saw some some to the effect that I didn't I didn't check into it because when uh, sometimes I just completely just got to check out of Stephen A. But um, I guess he said something to the fact that um, he needed a translator, and if this guy is going to be the star and the uh, uh, LeBron of baseball or whatever whatever he, space he occupies in baseball, and if the sport itself is trying to ingratiate itself to more of the world, then he needs to be able to you know be broader in how he presents himself and, and not being able to be understood because he may speak a different language or whatever is uh, holding him back. So I guess, you know. 
in this well, time, people are going to take stuff the wrong way and whatnot. So. I'm of two trains of thoughts because on one hand, I agree with that. Because yeah. as pro wrestling fans, we see it every time. You know, if you can't have someone who can translate a foreign language to the audience, and this isn't just whatever it English or English or whatever, it, it, it's about all, you know, forms of communication in, in the world of pro wrestling. You know, if you have a great promo guy that you can't understand, it doesn't matter how great a promo guy is because, well, we don't understand him. So there's always going to be a disconnect, and I think that's one of the reasons why Shinsuke Nakamura will always just be what he is because so much of personal charisma comes from being able to be the one who is able to explain how they're feeling because there's a reason why that's, that, that's, that, uh, that old idiom, lost in translation, exists because there's always going to be something that is lost from an interpreter. Now, I will say this. There are ways around it, and there are people who have transcended that issue. I'm thinking specifically of Fedor Emelianenko. He always has a Russian translator with him, even though he does speak English. And part of the reason why I think that works for him, as opposed to, say, Kazuchiko uh, Kata, is Fedor's not charismatic. Fedor is like a warm blanket. Like, you know it's just going to be there. You, you know what that warm blanket's going to do every time it steps in the ring, and it's, it's going to it's throw hands. But then afterwards, he's like, oh, yeah, I super respect my opponent. I super did the punch. Thank you for the fight. Like, okay, you're not charismatic. You are a vacuum of charisma. But that's also part of his hook is that he's just kind of a dad in a, in, in a Christmas sweater who can beat the shit out of a giant. Like, it's, it's cool, whatever, it's fine. But then you think about someone like Nakamura. I don't know if there's a translator in the world who can match his charisma. And that hurts when you're trying to broad the, the American appeal. So when I think of, of you know, uh, luchadors in, in the top card of Ring of Honor or Shohei Otani, there is going to be something that I think people should re- realize is that baseball and wrestling both need the same things, which is characters. You, you need to stand out. You need to be viable. You need to be marketable. And Shohei's really marketable as a talent, but he's never going to be goofy or fun. Like, you're not really going to understand a lot of what he does unless he's being overt and physical with his mannerisms. And that could happen. Like, completely could happen. But if you don't have that, it, it is harder to ne- connect. And we've seen this for 20 fucking years in pro wrestling, Marcus. We're not speaking out of our asses on this. We've seen it. Foreign talent who don't speak English have a harder time connecting with the audience. This is not... Some, you know, race or, or language issue, it's, it's just simple semantics. Like, like, we see it. There are examples. <laughs> there are many examples. Now, it can happen, but you need to be big personality. And I don't know if guys like Bandito in Ring of Honor, Shohei in baseball, I don't know if they have that personality needed to get over. Now, granted, I don't know much about Bandito because I don't watch a lot of Ring of Honor. I don't know if he's bilingual. He might be. I know Roosh is somewhat bilingual, but not to the, the effect that it's effective. So, I don't know. I, I, I like these guys, but I don't know if you build a company around them, especially in a company that relies so heavily on scripted promos or, or free-flow promos, depending on how everyone you know, wants to do it. That said, Bandito is cool as shit. <laughs> He's got that dope-ass mask. It, it's like that, that luchador mask that has, like, the... Um, the Wild West bandito like, uh, 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 handkerchief that hangs over the mouth. It's cool. So maybe he can get over, even if he doesn't cut great promos, but there is a, a issue. I shouldn't say issue, but there is going to be a, a bit of a barrier, a bit of a, a wall of sorts that he's going to need to get over and find ways to you know, attach himself with the audience in different ways if his English isn't great. Because when you're cutting promos in Philadelphia... It helps to speak English. Just like if you're cutting promos in Japan, it helps to speak Japanese. That's why Kenny Omega got over at such a huge level, and AJ Styles, while good, never hit the same uh, mark as Omega because Omega spoke, I would say, conversational Japanese. I don't know if I would say fluent, but he spoke good enough Japanese, and it helped get him over like gangbusters. So I do think that you know Ring of Honor should definitely ride the wave they're on, but also start looking for some long-term future champions who can take the belt and be able to do talk shows, be able to go on, you know, uh, interviews and, and whatnot. Now, 
Maybe they can with a translator. Maybe they can't. I don't know. I don't know what Ring of Honor's budget is. But, like, yeah. it's, it's certainly something to keep an eye on. Now, like I said, they might be bilingual. I don't know. Yeah. Like, Pentagon's ca- kind of bilingual. Calls everyone a bitch. I, I guess that counts. <laughs> 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 I mean, it counts. So uh, Marcus, yeah. let me just ask you this. Do you think a, a non-English speaking champion would appeal to you in today's day and age? Yeah, I just, I just think it's, I think it's a rarity. Like I feel like when you get and, and I guess it would be weird to uh, maybe unfair to put, you know, throw lucha in there because it's a completely different aspect from the streamlined Americanized wrestling that we're used to because, again, it's a wrestling product within the confines of a TV show. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think, uh, you know, a non-speaking, uh, English-speaking wrestler, I do think it could work. I do think it, it has to do with the aura, the presentation, the consistency in the presentation. Like, um, I mean, hell, it basically works with Brock. <laughs> I mean, he, obviously, <laughs> we know he speaks English, but, I mean, he doesn't talk. He doesn't like talking. He's not a big conversationalist. And if he is, it's not with the people he has to be around when he has to be the champion. So, you know, um, but he has the gold mine next to him. That is Paul Heyman, who does enough talking for several people um, and talks well enough that it almost doesn't matter. But you got people that don't have that. So, you know, I think somebody like Kenny Omega, we're going to talk about this next guy and in in more uh, shortly, but somebody like John Cena, who you can put in different markets, maybe not China now, but um, no China you can Taiwan you can't. Yeah, yeah Taiwan it is maybe not Taiwan, but you know it just makes you you know have longer reach and, and more marketable in, in certain areas. But certain instances you don't necessarily need that. Certain guys have held an aura, you know, like Taker and others for a very long time, and it's worked. But I, I do think it takes a certain amount of circumstances between that character, like I said, the presentation, the consistency in that presentation, and um, maybe like, maybe where you take them. But I don't think it's something that can be a norm, you know? Mm-hmm. Because there's the flip side of that where you got a perfectly speaking English person, and it's like, you know what? I wish you couldn't speak English. <laughs> exactly. Where's Prince Polo? Give no. me Prince Oh, oh no. Get me no, no, no. Jack- We're not speaking Jack- of, of Jackass Jaguar. No, no, no. <laughs> Jackass Jaguar. Damn it. I want the show to come back just so we can have that character be his arch nemesis. <laughs> he's just like, he's in like a white and like a silver and black and orange mask. And he just comes on. Hey, Prince Poe, I'm your biggest fan. I'm Jaguar Jr. <laughs> but he's just as talented. So when they get into it, he kicks his ass. <laughs> it's like, wow, I really didn't mean to do that. Oh my God! Hey, it's, Cody! It's all by up. accident. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he hurts Puma, he's like, "Oh my God, I'm so sorry." <laughs> he ends up winning the title by accident. He's like, "I don't want it." <laughs> um, I will say this, Marcus: you should definitely check out Shohei Otani. He is phenomenal. Most players in baseball yeah. can't do one thing great. He can do all things great. <laughs> It's fucking unfair. Yeah, and that, that's a that's another thing. I'm glad you brought that up because I maybe, like I said, I didn't check out everything around the Stephen A. Uh, kerfuffle, but I, maybe he said something that was trying to tell fans that just because he can't necessarily extend himself broader to maybe English-speaking audiences or what have you, that he can't be a success. But if you're a showstopper or you make yourself must-see TV a la like a Brock, because we know, regardless of what happens, when he comes, business picks up. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So if you can make yourself an attraction, which a lot of people can't and end up, unfortunately, in this generation, we see a lot of these athletes really and more in, so in the news for their antics outside of what they do in the sports world than oftentimes what they do. So if you can be an actual attraction, then you know that 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 puts a completely different stamp on you because even if you can't speak English, people at least want to see you what you can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, just one last thing I I I, I do want to bring up because I do think it's interesting. Um, Shohei isn't the first big Japanese star in America in in the world of baseball. Uh, there's been a few guys. Dale Nomo comes to mind, but.
But the first really big transcendent star was Ichiro Suzuki. And Ichiro, even though he learned English later on in his career, always used an, uh, an interpreter because he basically said, my job is to play baseball. I don't want to have to worry about, you know, English and, and, you know, speaking to the media because I don't want to make a mistake and then have to deal with that. Kind of like that was more or less the run around what he was saying. So like, I, I understand why some guys don't ever learn English. Cause, and I don't necessarily think it's, it's mandated to be a star. Um, but you look at guys like Giannis and, and Jokic and, and Luka, they're all from Europe. They all speak multiple languages, so that's why the NBA is you know, currently crushing a lot of other sports in global competition because their superstars are tri, quad, pentalingual, so I don't know. I think we should all learn more languages. I, for one, speak jackass. It's very difficult to learn. Touch of sarcasm. Speaking of touching, Homicide... Once again, a, a Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion. He won the belts f- with uh, Chris Dickinson, who's been making r- his rounds with New Japan USA. He was in Josh Barnett's Bloodsport, GCW. I want to say he was in the NWA. And I think he was also in that, um, that championship wrestling NWA hybrid offshoot that was doing weekly pay-per-views during the pandemic. <clears throat> so he's getting a lot of buzz lately. Um, I don't really know if you have any opinions on this. I just thought this is kind of interesting considering Chris Dickinson's on the rise right now. So with that, yeah, I mean, it's, no. yeah, it's always interesting to me how no matter how long he's been in the, uh, the business, he kind of finds ways to kind of dip out for a little bit, maybe put himself on the sideline for a little while, and then insert himself back in a position, and it never really feels like like oh, homicides back. Don't just, coming out, you know, still spotlight or anything like that. He, he kind of has uniquely found a way to kind of keep himself around um, and never stale, you know. So, you know, kudos to him. I think what's interesting is <clears throat> Hernandez is still an impact. Homicide mm-hmm. just won the World Tag Team titles. Um, Ortiz and Santana are again paired with Conan. And MLW with Conan is bringing in their own version of LAX. Who would have thought that in, what was it, late 2005, early 2006, Conan, Homicide, and who was it, Machete? I think he was the first one. No, Apollo. It was, it was Conan, Apollo, and, and Homicide would start a little group called LAX that 15 years later is still going strong in three different promotions. Go Fucking figure, man. It's wild. <clears throat> uh, I seem to have lost a photo. Oh, no, but I just hit the wrong button. There we go. Other big news... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Other big news from Ring of Honor's uh, Best in the World event. Chris Hero was backstage. Uh, so <clears throat> there are, you know... Apparently, he's looking at coming in as a uh, agent. But we'll see what happens with that. Obviously, Chris Hero competed in uh, NXT as Cassius Ono. What a terrible name. We're also apparently going to get Chelsea Green in Ring of Honor, so she won't be an impact, thank Jeebus. Jeebus is the guy from down the street. Marcus, Chris Hero as an agent. Chelsea Green in the Ring of Honor Women's Division. Thoughts? Uh, I like the Chris Hero's agent because he's 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 got the body build of an agent. <laughs> um, and as a couch. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, and as far as Chelsea Green, look, man, she you know she's cool, she's fine. She just you know I I don't want to see a wrestle. Not to say that she can't. You know, I'll just, say it. I, she can't. <laughs> you suck, babe. Who suck her? Who suck her? Come here. <laughs> but I find that there will be no survivor. Um, but, yeah, I, I think she got a better opportunity to get much more of a spotlight in Ring of Honor because they're still getting that women's division together after all this time, still trying to get it off the ground and, and consistently with some momentum. So, 
You know, if there's a chance. And isn't she best friends with Deanna Parasa or something like that? I thought it was Maria. She's best friends with somebody. I think somebody reached out. I think it might be Parasa, which is ironic because she was supposed to be that gym and that, that guiding light for that uh, particular division. And now she's that, I guess, for uh, Impact. But, you know, I wish her luck uh, in that. Like I said, they're they trying again to put some momentum in that thing, and now they got Maria associated with it, and she's got her focus on that. So we'll see what happens, but I am glad she's not an impact because, again, I just I don't want to see her in ring, and I definitely don't want her back in the, the Laurel Van Mess capacity. And I, she probably looks at that character like Cody kind of looked at um, what that was, Stardust. From you all know? accounts, I think she actually liked that character. I like, That was her idea, I think. I'll have to double check. <clears throat> You think anonymity is your friend? Oh, damn, I fucked up the line. You think anonymity is your ally? I was born in it. Molded by it. I didn't reveal my social security number until I was a man. And then it was stolen. Yeah, you're not supposed to reveal it, Bane. Goddamn. Take that man out of that movie, it doesn't change. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Like of, of all the Nolan Batmans, the last one is my absolute favorite. I, I know not everyone loves it, but man. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so interesting good. because but Begins is my favorite because that's the most Batman-y of them all. Mm-hmm. As they went on, I feel like, you know, they kind of they kind of lost me on it as, as it got more tech, tactical, if you will. But, I mean, to be fair, in those, those two sequels, both villains stole the movie from him. Mm-hmm. So. To me, I felt like, you know, Liam Neeson's Rise of Ghoul was a great counterbalance in that first one. And like I said, that was the most batman of them all. But, uh, yeah, you, you can't hate on Like you said, you that, that Dark Knight is a hitter. And if you don't know anything else from that, la- that last one, you know all the bang quotes. So. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. And this gives you power over me? No, brother. They must find one of us in the wreckage. <laughs> Marcus dreads the day I say that to him. <laughs> <laughs> and they Chad impromptu leaves this show. <laughs> the back's gonna be on kid number two, and they're like, "No, brother." <laughs> One of us must go down with the show. <laughs> oh man! Speaking of going down, sugar, we're going down swinging. Jimmy Uso. Is not going to be punished because storyline more important than responsibility. Now, granted, I don't know how much you can teach a 37-year-old, 36-year-old to be responsible at that point in his life. Because either you are or you aren't at that point. But, Marcus, don't you think that maybe Jimmy Uso should, I don't know, at the very least be written off the show so he can go to rehab? let alone be suspended for being a perpetual fuck-up? Yeah, it would be nice to know something's taking place. I mean, you know, the way that it came off, because it was mildly acknowledged uh, maybe twice uh, on SmackDown. Um, Very offhandedly, I think, maybe once by Roman, and then his brother was like, even mentioned, like, even what you're going through now, we can get through this. So... It was referenced, but I don't know what's taking place behind the scenes. I know his his wife took a nice, nice social media brunt of it that she shouldn't have had any business um, getting it all. But, you know, shitty wrestling fans will be what they are. Um, it would be nice to know there was just some type of repercussions that he's taking. And maybe, I don't know, maybe they had a family sit down with him or something. But, you know, I, I heard, you know, a, another, you know, wrestling commentator in the in the community in the podcast community said at least take his effing license away from him for a while or some suspend his license because it's like and they mentioned it and we talk about this all the time these four instances are just the ones we know about mm-hmm. what about all the times that he's been that way and got home mm-hmm. you know like regardless of how people feel about him or whatever he put other people's potentially put other people's lives in jeopardy on multiple occasions like I said, those are just the times we know about and the times the, the cops caught him. So it's, it's it's just not good. It's not good. He's not the drinker he thinks he is. And, you know, at this point, what's more important? You know, it's, it's not even about his wrestling career. Like I said on the last show, it's about quality of life. Mm-hmm. You got a wife and, and, and kids to think about. 
and you know um you know not not to bring up even more sour note but we we know unfortunately how things ended for his uncle mm-hmm you know, who, who was the whole sole reason why him and his brother got into the business in the first place. So you don't you don't want to go back, you know, re- doing the re- repeat things, man. So like I said, it would be nice to know in some form of fashion that he was, you know, getting some type of repercussions behind the scenes. Um, but, you know, maybe he is and we just don't know. And we, we don't necessarily need to know. But you, you kind of got to set a pace too as a company when this kind of stuff comes up specifically if you're going to continue to be a star and the, the make a wish and this that and the third and every other big campaign they got going out like can you imagine if this was titus huh. <laughs> <laughs> huh. come on man let's be what? honest if titus sneezed in the direction of vince mcmahon the wrong way he'd be fired <laughs> And, and and you know me, I'm not usually one to hound on on things of race and whatnot, because I, I I like to I like to hope that people aren't as bigoted as they might be. But in the case of Titus when he's on the WWE, I feel like he's constantly doing that. Like, have you seen that that I think it's like a Quervo commercial or something like that, where like they're all at a bar during the pandemic and everyone's like being super respectful and they're wearing the mask and then like the two dudes see each other in the hallway and they're both like, wait, come on, man. And the other one's like, no, no, you come on. And they like hug the wall as they cross each other, not to be within like six feet of each other. I feel like that's how Titus operates in that facility every day where he's just like sliding against the wall so he doesn't accidentally bump into someone because he knows he's like half an inch from being fired at all times because Vince is super fucking awful. <laughs> Poor Titus. Jimmy Uso needs to be suspended. He needs to be in rehab. He needs to be getting his shit together. I don't... And here's the thing that fucking baffles me. I'm asking for 30, maybe 90 days tops. Yeah. The rumor going around is that Roman and, and The Rock may do something for WrestleMania. And that's why they need Jimmy. And I'll just point this out. In 90 days, that's three months. We are in the seventh month. Three months from now is, is October. Marcus, I, I'm not a smart man. I'm often accused of being very, very stupid. But March is not October. April is not October. WrestleMania is not in October. Am I correct in thinking that? Correct. So I feel like that's just a cop-out, and I feel like Vince McMahon just like, I don't give a fuck if you're an alcoholic. Go kill yourself. I don't care. Just don't be late for the show. That's the vibe I'm getting from this. Like, how many times have we seen Scott Hall and, and so many other Alicia Fox, Sonny, China, yeah. Eva Mendez. Wait. Rosa. Rosa Mendez. Yeah. I knew one of those was right. <laughs> how many times do we got to see these people deal with alcohol and, and, and not be given the help they need? I understand we live in a culture where it's A-OK to be an alcoholic, but, like, it's not. If you drink excessively, that's not fun, funny, cool, or cute. It's a problem. You have a problem. But, I mean, no one wants to listen to me. Hey, by the by, my my homeland won a soccer thing, apparently. (laughs) Oh, wow. I was like, cool. Fuck soccer. <laughs> it's just, like I said, man, it's just bad, man, because, again, how many times does this have to happen? And, and thank God the times that it's happened, it's just been him. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's not gotten hurt because, uh, you know, I would tell you about that that uh, story about that, that family accident, but I also mm-hmm. um, a couple months back had a, a family friend who was like an uncle to me. He ran his car into a tree was so much force that the motor apparently knocked him out of the car, out of the truck. Jesus. And when she did stuff like that, it's like, that could have been nothing else but being, you know, driving impaired, man. And it's stuff like that. And it's like, you know, you hear about the Jimmy thing and him swerving in and out of lanes. It's like, it don't take but a few seconds for everything to go, you know, to tragedy. And he, like I said, he's a father, he's a husband. And, and, you know, all that's more important than him being a, a, a however many time tag team champion or in a main event storyline. None of that matters. 
I mean, so, Paul Walker died. I mean, I, I, I wasn't wasn't his buddy drinking and driving? Uh, Just, no, I think they were uh, leaving they were, an event, and um, I think that the, the car was kind of fast, and they were kind of uh, going. They were uh, speed. Right. I think, yeah, I just think he lost control of the car. So even even not impaired, yeah. it's so easy to crash. Jeff Hardy, you know, uh, wait, was that a storyline? <laughs> Fucking hell! I think that yeah, was a storyline. God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see how effed up that is. Like, but think about that. This is the man he works for. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know Jeff Hardy wrecked his dirt bike, but he wasn't that we know of inebriated. He just hung his legs off on the uh, the jump and broke his fe- yeah. ankles. He, did yeah. he break both of them? Like, what a Charlie Brown bullshit thing to do. Yeah, it's funny because all the stuff he's ever and we talked about it at the time, like all the stuff he's ever done in his career and all those insane swan times off unnecessary heights. And the one time he got really injured was on on leisure time. Mm-hmm. But are you surprised? That's no, the I didn't. I didn't. I, didn't, I think the one wasn't one of the last times he was really like got caught up. That they they found him in a stairwell or something. In in storyline. No, no, in real life. Like the one of the times that he was like really messed up. They had found him someplace. I think Paris maybe that was. Was that uh, Victory Road of 2011? I think. We'll have to check that out. Yeah. We're, we're going to move on, Marcus, if you want. Look that up and, and, and let's, see, uh, let's yeah. see what we see. Uh, while you do that, we have to say goodbye to Paula Ortendorf, yeah. Mr. Wonderful. I think he was 71, which, like, once you get after 60, like 70, like, once you hit, like, 70 years old, if you pass away, I no longer go, oh, I'm so sad. I just go, yeah, I had a good run. And when you have dementia and you check out at 70, it's like more of a relief than it is anything else. Because the, th- the sick thing with dementia or Alzheimer's is that there are going to be moments of lucidity that these people have where they know that they don't remember things. Could you imagine what that's like? That's a new kind of hell. So there's almost a relief that they're no longer suffering and, and knowing how bad Paul Ortendorf was health wise and, you know, with, with the Alzheimer's and, or, or maybe it's just dementia because you know, dementia is a symptom of Alzheimer's, I think is what it is, or vice versa. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm glad that he's no longer in pain. I'm glad that we got so many years with him. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I, I feel for his son because we've all been there or will be there having to say goodbye yeah. to your father. But on, on the other side of things, you're just glad that he's no longer suffering. 71 years, pretty decent run. Can't yeah, really ask for anything more than uh, that. Yeah, I wasn't really familiar with him as a, as a town. I think it was kind of before my time, but uh, you never want to hear about somebody passing away, uh, losing life. Uh, but like you said, you know, it's those things when we get older, man, on top of everything that he probably put his body through in rain. Um, you know, Father Time, you know, gets us all, you know, and then, like you said, you know, it, it always is sad, but, you know, to know certain individuals aren't suffering anymore. We've lost a lot of legends like that, like, mm-hmm. you know, specifically, you know, um, guys suffer from dementia or, or Parkinson's, or, like you said, Alzheimer's and stuff like that. You know, when you watch, have to watch people get older and their body starts to turn on, you know, and it's kind of all they can do just to, you know, just, just to wake up and to just be during the day it's it's you know you, you hate to see it but like you said it's something we may all very well have to go through uh some of us more than others but uh yeah 71 years man hell of a run professionally and then of course in life because you know we done probably been you know been a more films than we like to be about people who damn near barely made it to 40 mm-hmm. you know so you know you know god bless him and his family you know you hate to hear it but uh like you said i did look that up real quick and it's <laughs> It's funny because I, I recollected it right. Apparently, in twenty in twenty nineteen, before Jeff Hardy found passed out in the public stairwell before arrest. Um, report <laughs> by TMZ it says the report states that according to police documents, cops found Hardy passed out in a public stairwell, saying he reeked the booze. Come on, Jeff. Yeah, this uh, 
this was apparently, you know, uh, when he was out of action, of course, it's my, clearly when he was with WWE, uh, when he was out of action, expecting to undergo some type of knee surgery. Um, so, yeah, it was. Uh, well, that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see. Anything else on this week's version of the, the Wrestling Underground? Nope. So with that being said, we're done for this portion of the Wrestling Underground. Stay tuned if you're listening live to the stream. You can see it right now. Like we're going to be talking about uh, Slamversary here. Otherwise, realnerdcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-R-P.com. We're on Twitter at N-E-R-D-C-R-P. Just did a rebooking. My first one in quite some time. Great American Bash 2004. I'm not sure how I like it. I, 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 I had a fucking hard time with that one. There wasn't a lot to work with. Although I did find a cool website, Marcus. Hang on. Uh, I'm going to pull this website up. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's called Pornhub.com. <laughs> oh, you scam. <laughs> uh, it's called... Hang on. I just clicked on it. Load faster. It's called the SmackdownHotel.com. And the cool thing about this, Marcus, is you can pick from FCW, Lucha Underground, MLW, AWA, NWA, ECW, WCW, New Japan, Ring of Honor, TNA, AW, AEW, and WWE. And then you can click on the year that you want to see, and they will show you what the roster was in that year. This is a godsend to me and my, my stupid fantasy booking. <laughs> It's so cool. I love it. I, I don't know how long this website's been around, but, like, yeah, I, 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 I was fat. Yeah. S- big fan. Yeah, but that, uh, that, that's really cool. Now all they need is, a, like, a brother or sister website about where are some of these guys now. Cause right. Because, you know, because I'm thinking about that roster. I'm like, that kind of reminds me because I got Dead Reckoning 2 on GameCube, and that roster consisted of, like, Rene Dupree and Kenzo Suzuki and Paul London when he was on his own and freaking Heidenreich. Like, it's de- it's definitely a thing, man. It's definitely a thing. Uh, they've been around Twitter for at least eleven years, so I, apparently I'm fucking late to the party. <laughs> 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 oh well. So, uh, Marcus, you can be found on Twitter, Paradox Kid, P-A-R-A-D-O-X-K-I-D. That's me. You can also find him on his other podcast, The True Penny Show, at T-R-U-E-P-E-N-N-Y-S-H-O-W. That's True Penny Show on Twitter. Listen to them there. Find me on Twitter, Chad Nerd, Corp, C-H-E-D, N-E-R-D, C-R-P, and on the Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. Reminder, we are still going live if you're listening to the stream, but if you're on YouTube, we are done. We are out. Marcus. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. And as always, watch more wrestling now, Marcus. I remembered how to do the flow. You're up. Good night, meat. All right, 4320 sounds like a good stopping point for this version of the show. We're still...